being a Harry Potter fan, and of course, if you're a fan, you're probably a fan of Snape as well, because his character arc is one of the more interesting character arcs in the whole thing. How does it feel <laughs> to know that Alan Rickman fucking mm -hmm. hated every minute of it? <laughs> Alan Rickman and Harry Potter. You're a Harry Potter fan, right, Nick? Oh, yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, Alan Rickman. Love yeah. Harry Potter. And uh, I'm a Harry Potter fan. Uh, not as much as some, but I enjoy the movies. I read all the books. I enjoyed the book. I think each the books got better as they went along. I thought that that was one of the cool things about the books. I thought the books matured with the characters as it went along. I don't yep. really hear enough people talk about that, but um, I always felt that way. But um, the movies do as well to a degree. Alan Rickman, I think he's a great actor as well, and I thought he was great as Snape. Snape was a really intriguing character. He ended up being a very intriguing character. Um, well, apparently, somebody who didn't like Harry Potter was Alan Rickman himself. Mm. <laughs> he was not a fan. He recently, he passed away in 2016 to, I think it was prostate cancer, or colon yeah, cancer, one or the other. Yeah. Unfortunately, he battled that for a long time, apparently. He got diagnosis in, like, 2004. But, um, he, he has had a series of, I don't know if they've been released as a book or if they've just gone public, which I don't know how I feel about that. We'll talk about it. But his diaries, he has had a series of diary entries and just diaries become public here recently. And apparently when talking about the Harry Potter movies and making those, because he made them for quite a few years, he uh, displayed his disdain about it all. Alan Rickman did not count himself among the legions of Potterheads, according to his recent revealed diary entries. Uh, here's some of the quotes from his diary. Finally, yes to Harry Potter 5. The sensation is neither up nor down. The argument that wins is the one that says, see it through, it's your story. Uh, this is in reference to... Uh, okay, finally, we, the way that this is supposed to be framed is, finally, we're to this, the, the fifth one. Almost done. The sensation of neither up nor down, meaning he did not give a shit that he was... that. He didn't care. He didn't care about these movies. Um, and the only thing that made him or helped him get through it was, see it through, it's your story. Which we'll get to that more in a moment. Uh, he also said in one of his diary entries, talking to Agent Paul Le Leon Maris about Harry Potter exit, because he apparently every single movie tried to get out of the movies, <laughs> which he thinks will happen. But here we are in the Project Collision area again, retaining no more Harry Potter. Uh, what? Oh, I'm sorry, retiring no more Harry Potter. They don't want to hear it. So in other words, he kept on, the, the reports show that he, pretty much every movie, he tried to get out of it. And they kept so talking him Harrison into Ford. it. <laughs> he wanted nothing to do with it. Now, why? That's the question. Why did he want nothing to do with it? <clears throat> well, apparently Rickman felt that when he was donning the Snape outfit, in his words, he wasn't himself. I realize as soon as Snape's ring and costume go on, something happens. It becomes alien to me. Chatty, smiley, open, all of it's alien. The character narrows me down, tightens me up. So he didn't like playing this character. Apparently he took it real seriously. It made him feel very alienated from everyone. He didn't like the way that it made him feel. Uh, there were reports of on set fighting with him and some of the directors because it just put him in a really bad mind space. And he just wasn't into it. But according to everybody, he was always very professional except for those on set fightings. And uh, he did think highly of some of his castmates. I will say that. Now he did find John Williams score to be hideous in his words. I'll say that, and a lot of people really love that score, so they'll hate to hear that. But it wasn't all, like, uh, it wasn't all bad. I mean, he did say that he did like some, like uh, Daniel Radcliffe, he thought was always charming and great, no matter how bad the day was. And a lot of the other people he worked with said that he was really nice to work with, but apparently he was fucking hating it every minute of the day. <laughs> now, the one thing that kept him going, apparently, and it has come out that uh, J.K. Rowling had let him know basically at least part of where Snape was going to end up by the end with where he always loved Lily and etc etc and in his words this is what kept him going Snape dies heroically Potter describes him as his 
to his children as one of the bravest men he ever knew and calls his son Albus Severus. This was a genuine rite of passage, one small piece of information from Joe Rowling seven years ago. Snape loved Lily Potter. Gave me a cliff edge to hang on to. Well, with that bit of information that we have there, Nick, being a Harry Potter fan, and of course if you're a fan, you're probably a fan of Snape as well because his character arc is one of the more interesting character arcs in the whole thing. How does it feel <laughs> to know that Alan Rickman... That you probably, as you said, you're a fan of his as well. Fucking hated every minute of it. Yeah, it's um, it's not surprising. He's notorious, like Al Guinness, for hating the series that brought him a lot of popularity because you know Al Guinness became more, like really famous because of Star Wars, and I get it. You know, Al Guinness and uh, Alan Rickman were thespians on the stage, so you can tell Al Guinness or I'm, I'm sorry, Alan Rickman was he wasn't a fan of being on screen on movies i think his one of his best roles kind of displays that which of course was a galaxy quest where he played a very despondent british guy yeah <laughs> i think it really it that really felt role. i know right but the i mean think about this you're you're playing one of the most popular characters in a franchise like harry potter and you're having to do this you know for a decade long career and your career is already 30 plus years at this point and you're just not loving what you do i i it makes you wonder why he even wanted to do this i don't know if it was for his kids or well, or apparently he didn't he didn't want to do it he had to be convinced by christopher columbus twice <laughs> he like talked him into doing it that was another part of the story i don't have here in front of me but mm -hmm. he he had to be convinced multiple times to please take this role you'd be perfect for it and we want you in this so i mean they probably threw some money at him too i'm sure but i mean he had to be talked into doing it by christopher columbus and then for the sequel he was like no i'm not coming back and he had to be talked into that as well it's like every movie they had to sit down with him with alan and <laughs> talk him into coming back because his character was so important or was going to be yeah it's it's so weird because like i don't I love that Alan Rickman's in this movie, in this franchise, because he's the best part of it. I'm going to be honest, he's the best part of the whole entire franchise. And his character arc is so fascinating because he's played off to be like kind of a villain, but he's actually more of a protector. And he's just like that stodgy, stodgy grandfather or stodgy uncle that just seems angry all the time, but they actually have a lot of love for the family. And exactly. Yeah, it's the same thing. I just... It's like I said, I go back to Al Guinness. Why even, like, how how are you so convinced that, like, you don't want anything to do with this? You're bad-mouthing it in letters and stuff like that. But you do it anyways. It just, it's such a weird thing. But Al Guinness, or um, I keep saying Al Guinness, uh, Alan Rickman will always be one of my favorite actors because he always took on roles that were very different for the actor because apparently he was very soft-spoken and very, <clears throat> very smart and very, like, you know, he loved theater. But then he goes on to play as his first role, uh, Hans Gruber in Die Hard. And he went on to do like Dogma and like very famous roles, Love Actually. And it just feels like, you know, Harry Potter would feel like the like the choice role. But there was apparently a lot of people who were in Harry Potter that only did it because uh, their kids could watch it. So I get that, I but I don't think that's why he yeah. did it. <laughs> and in Alan Guinness's defense, he really only did one movie. I mean, he came home for like pretty much a cameo in the other two. <laughs> Yeah, but he was really but he only was like one. Yeah, he was down on that franchise for like from the minute go. Oh, yeah, it was, was pretty crazy. Shit talking but... left and right. Uh, Alan yeah. Guinness, I'm, uh, I'm doing it too. Uh, Alan Rickman. It seems like uh, it probably just really wasn't that hard for him to uh, play Snape, this this miserable seeming character all the time, because he was fucking miserable himself. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, all jokes aside, he was apparently during the entirety. Well, just about the entirety of this series dealing with this uh, is either colon or prostate cancer as well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he was doing other things, other films as well. Um, so that probably made things a bit more difficult for him too, going through something that traumatic that eventually did unfortunately take his life. But um, yeah, I thought I just thought this was kind of I don't know, not ironic, just kind of funny, not funny, but kind of wow i didn't expect that that he hated not just that he hated the role there's plenty of actors that are like oh i hated being in that movie he hated being in seven fucking movies <laughs> i mean it's amazing to me that 
he was convinced seven times to be to stay in this franchise. I'm sure that they were trying to get him to sign a contract, like contractually obligate him to be there at some point. But he did it. He finished it out. And that, what he said kept him going was J.K. Rowling letting him know that, hey, you know, the end, this is what happens. And he found that compelling enough to, like, stay in it because this is your story. Tell your story. Finish it. And that, that's there's something noble. There's something to be said there. He started a job, and he finished it, so good for him. But yeah. Let us know in the comments below what you think about Alan Rickman saying, I fucking hate Harry Potter. And how about the score? He hated John Williams' score, too. I know a lot of people love that score. He uh, hates it. I love it. it. Apparently, every time he hears that, doon, 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 he's like, ugh, fucking hate it. He's Rakes. called it hideous. It's hideous. Oh, man. But um, let us know what you think of that and uh, what you think of the Harry Potter franchise overall as far as the films go. And let us know in the comments below.